If you've ever tried to keep your tossing arm up on your serve, then you must watch this video because it might be ruining your tennis results. You're about to see a real world transformation from this serve to this one. Keep watching if you want to hit serves with smooth, effortless power and level up your game. Recently, I was playing some evaluation points against a solid 4.0 player, and at first blush, it looked like his serve was really solid. But when we slowed things down and looked at it frame by frame, it revealed a big problem. I'll show you what that is in a second and the solution to it, but first, let's see what some of the best servers of all time do with their bodies and their rackets. So check out this footage of Roger Federer hitting a serve, and I'm gonna go back and forth smoothly a couple times, and I want you to keep an eye on his left arm, his tossing arm, and answer the question in your own head, when does his tossing arm start to drop? When does it start to fall? And I want you to look at it in relationship to his rackets movement, and also watch the writing on his shirt, and look at how there's kind of a synchronization going on. When his left arm starts to drop, it happens to sync up with when his racket starts to drop, and that happens to sync up with when his chest starts to rotate up towards the point of contact. All of those things are happening in unison. His left arm is coming down while his racket is also coming down while his body is rotating upwards. I also want you to take a look at his right elbow and watch his right elbow and how it starts coming up along with the rotation of his body right around that same time when his left arm is coming down. This is kind of like a seesaw effect with the two sides of his body switching positions and the pivot point around that is his actual core, his chest rotating up into the air. So here's the critical question that we need to answer in terms of using the body effectively and smoothly. Are his arms trading places because his body is turning or is his body turning because his arms are trading places? In other words, which of these elements are the primary one and which of them are the secondary one? Which is the leader and which is the follower? Well, if you've spent much time studying biomechanics, then you know that the body should be the primary mover. That's kind of should be the engine or the power source and the arms should always follow along with it. And yet, when you go down the checklist of all the most common pieces of advice about the serve, they're all very arm and hand dominant. Scratch your back, brush your hair, drop the racket, reach up high, snap your wrist, and of course, keep your tossing arm up. All of these are completely arm and hand or racket focused tips or instructions. And so it takes the focus away from what the body is doing. And that leads to motions like the one that my student had. In full speed, it looks like a pretty strong motion. But if you've watched lots of elite level players hitting serves from this angle, you can tell something just isn't quite right. But it's hard to see exactly what it is until things get slowed down. Instead of his arms transitioning around the rotation of his body smoothly, there's actually three different phases of acceleration or movement happening here. First, his right arm initiates upwards without his chest. Then his body starts coming along and follows. And so now his body is starting to turn and go up and try to catch up with his arm and his racket as he goes up towards contact. But what in the world is happening with his left arm, his tossing arm? It's still in the same position it was when he first released his toss. Here's where he released his toss, then his right arm leads, then his body follows, and all the while his left arm stays there all the way up until he makes contact. And so at the point of contact, his left arm is actually blocking the rotation and the acceleration of his racket up towards the point of contact. A lot of you are probably still kind of skeptical about this whole drop the tossing arm thing on the serve. So let's go through some quick rapid fire pro examples. And I want you to notice the relationship between the racket starting to go up towards contact. So already reached the racket drop and starting to go up 
And I want you to look at where the tossing arm is on a bunch of top players. So here's that point right now. The racket has just started going up towards contact and Alcaraz has his tossing hand down at waist height. Here's Serena Williams, one of the best tennis serves of all time. Here's her racket drop. And now as her racket starts going upwards, look at where her tossing arm is. It's down below waist height. Here's Andy Murray. He's going down into his racket drop. His tossing arm is dropping. Here's the bottom of his racket drop. On the way up towards contact, look at his hand. It's down below waist height. Here's Novak Djokovic. His racket's starting to drop. His arm, his left arm is dropping as well. There's the bottom of the racket drop. And now he's just on the way up and look at his hand. It's right about it, waist height. And now just for contrast, here's my student again. Here's the racket falling. His left arm isn't doing anything. It's still there. There's his racket drop. His racket's on the way up now. And where's his hand? It's like, it's like a solid three feet higher than all those professional players still at the very top of where he released the ball. And it's now actually blocking the smooth transfer of energy up towards the ball and out into the court. Now, just to be really clear, do we want to avoid the tossing arm dropping too soon? Absolutely, yes, of course. But this student had been told hundreds of times by coaches every time he hit the ball into the net that he needs to keep his tossing arm up. And the more he tried to do that, the longer he kept it up, the longer he kept it up, the more his body started getting out of sync. And I've seen this with multiple students over the years following the advice, following the instructions of coaches who frankly don't even know or understand the relationship between the tossing arm, the left arm, and the body. And instead, they just repeat the cl cliche phrase of, oh, just keep your tossing arm up and that'll keep the ball out of the net. It's not that simple. In fact, it can actually lead to worse results like it did with this student here. So how did I fix this problem and free up the smooth, natural power that my student is supposed to have? We went through a couple of drill progressions together. The first one, I just had him place his hands under his chin with straight arms parallel to his shoulders and practice going from a trophy pose where he was turned and tilted and then rotate his body and his arms together in one piece so that his left arm would start high and his right arm would start low and he would rotate and transition his arms to where his right arm would finish high and his left arm would finish low. This helps create the sensation of what it would be like to have the body actually leading the arms and have everything be in sync instead of what he was doing before, which was his arms doing different things than his body all at different times and blocking things up. The second drill I had him do was just simply go through some slow segmented shadow swings where he was pausing, taking inventory, making sure that he was coordinating his arms together with his body, checking in with the video, because he, guess what? He was leaving his left arm up way too long initially, even without a ball there. So this takes some time and some repetition to start to rewire the brain and re-coordinate the body together correctly. The third progression we did was smooth, continuous shadow swing. So no stopping, no pausing to like make sure he was doing it right. We're just taking small like baby steps here and filling in the gaps and teaching him how to move his body athletically and smoothly and making sure that he's timing and coordinating the dropping of his left arm appropriately. We don't want it to be too early either. We want it to be at the right time. And that right time is when the body starts to initiate. The fourth progression we did was have him do two smooth, continuous shadow swings at about the right tempo that he would need to actually hit a ball and then actually put up a toss and hit the ball. And it led to serves like this where now he's actually coordinating his body together correctly and releasing his energy and his power at the right time, which is giving him much bigger results with much less effort and energy. Is he fixed now? Does he have a new serve? No, this is gonna take time and repetition and very deliberate conscious training to make this a new subconscious habit. But you can see here with the before and after that it's clearly a more athletic move and now he's producing a lot more flow and energy in his serve. Really happy I get to help players break free of those ruts and do something better and more effective. 
If you'd like to learn how to work with me in person, shoot me an email, ian at essentialtennis.com. Thanks so much for watching.